This episode of Weed and Grub is brought to you by La Vida Verde. La Vida Verde is a health and wellness edibles brand. I can hear the commas. <laughs> like, that's how good you are. I love listening to your voice on Reads for La Vida Verde because you can hear the commas. That's how good you are at this. Oh, uh, thank you very much. Well, La Vida Verde makes me feel great. So I'm glad that I make them sound good. Oh, good. Yeah. <laughs> like, you sound intelligent. Like. Oh high-minded some would say oh, know what i'm saying right i see where you're going with this yeah high-bodied high-minded uh-huh yeah thank you well la vida verde uh is made with only the highest quality ingredients oh it's a triple flip yeah high-minded high body high quality high, high quality <laughs> la vida <laughs> yeah. verde la vida, la vida verde, verde. <laughs> yeah. three for three three for three with la vida verde using coconut and cashews to create delicious guilt-free cookies which are sweetened with unrefined coconut sugars mm. oh, that's so good toasty when you, and delicious yeah oh my gosh can you imagine what their ovens smell like oh man like toasted cashew toasted coconut <laughs> is like it's I it's, think it's what heaven smells like. It must be. <laughs> because every time I smell it, I'm like, oh my God, I remember how much I fucking love this. It's, it's oh, I always think of it's like- It's a top scent. You know, the Looney Tunes where like the you, the nose follows the scent and then the, like the toes come, come yes. twiddling up <laughs> off the ground. I feel like that's how it would be in the Little Vita Verde kitchen. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Just people floating from oven to oven, uh -huh. checking the coconut. <laughs> that's great. <laughs> La Vita Verde's tinctures are also amazing. They're crafted with botanical extracts like chamomile mm -hmm. and they work incredibly. I love the Relax Tincture myself. I've been taking the Relax because we've talked about it. I'm having a lot of trouble sleeping right now, like mm -hmm. 7.30 a.m. fall asleep. Wow. And it's helping me just not do that, which yeah. is also high-minded for me. It's really good for my body and mind to not fall asleep at 7.30 in the morning. That's so interesting because I've been using it to start my day. A little bit of Vita, like the Relax in the morning with a little tea yeah, kind of sets me right to get going. Oh, we're like ships passing in the night. We could just <laughs> hand off the tincture. Good morning. Good night. Bye. Drip, drip. <laughs> I love that. Everything La Vida Verde makes is organic, vegan, non-GMO, and gluten-free because they believe that the best medicine starts with the food you eat. Straight up. High-bodied, high-minded, high-quality ingredients. Go to LaVidaVerde.com to learn more and follow them on Instagram at LaVidaVerde420. Great follow. Do it. Hello, and welcome to Weed and Grub. Ooh. a regimen of stuff that you put in your body every single day weed and coffee <laughs> do you have like and probably a frozen pizza at midnight okay and then like listerine or toothpaste i don't drink don't the really listerine <laughs> <laughs> you think that's how you use it well i'm wondering like how you okay so i just started taking a once a day multivitamin oh great I, you know, I feel pretty good about it. I'm making some uh, healthy adult choices with my life. But I'm wondering how you know when you have had your multivitamin for the day. Because, like, you know when you've had your coffee for the day. Right. Because you feel it. You know when you've smoked your weed for the day because you feel it. And honestly, coffee and weed are, like, not from 10 to 10.30 a.m. It's kind of as needed right. throughout the day. As needed throughout the day. <laughs> but this multivitamin situation has me confused because I take it. I can't tell if I've taken it or not. Sometimes I take it twice. Sometimes I forget to take it. I'm really worried that I'm going to like do some harm instead of some good to my body because I'm like, you know, I'm putting like 16 times the amount of fucking zinc in my system. That I just... <laughs> she OD'd on zinc. Oh, no. No. It was a vitamin D overdose. So um, <laughs> Some dick overdose. What? Come oh, on. Oh, my God. No. Anyway, I don't know. How, how do you tell? Like, I'm worried that I'm going to have to get one of those pill things no don't be a pill pill like bin. Your don't get a pill bin have, yeah you know? like well i mean I'll, there are people who take medications who genuinely need those because they are on so many medications they how many vitamins are in your new regimen there's just one a day <laughs> <laughs> you can't get a pill so bin I'm for one vitamin <laughs> i'm trying to figure it out because i'm like well where do i put it so that i remember to take one every single day and not more than one right well, ooh, because yeah, if you take more than one, it's about establishing that routine. Yeah, because like right. I legit think I've taken three of them today. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if that's good or bad. Because <laughs> I woke up really early, 
And then I think I took it twice this morning because I was hadn't had enough coffee and I was like, did I take it? Well, I guess I'll just take it again. And then I just took one now because I couldn't remember if I'd take them this morning. And then after I took it, I remembered. So I'm... Um, well, how are you listen, feeling? I feel crazy. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's the multivitamins. I think so. Which either means it's good or bad. I can't tell because if you took, I don't know. if you pop three and you feel powerful and psychotic, then how do I look? You're shaking. You're or shimmering. <laughs> I should say shimmering. Oh, thank you. Yeah, that's yeah, a kind shake. Like the northern lights, shimmering like aurora borealis. <laughs> yeah, or like. Like a twitchy multivitamin overdoser. Yeah. Well, I mean, your eyes are rolling in your head like Gizmo and Gremlins, <laughs> but otherwise you're doing fine. Oh, man. I have a pitch instead of a pill bin for you. Okay. What if you break it up into five lines? Oh, and just snort it? Yeah. And you, it's a one a, it's a, it's a one a day, five line routine. Well, I would definitely remember that. Yeah. That's, I, that's, that's a what I'm good saying. way for me to remember whether or not I've taken my multivitamins, whether or not my sinus cavity is like fucking damaged from snorting some crazy shit yeah, but how i mean i don't know if it's fun i almost said how fun would it be but i'm gonna keep pitching it uh, just the idea of like five little lines on your counter every morning for you to yeah, um, i mean it would kind of, it'd be entertaining it would certainly like if you had house guests and they'd be like what's that yeah oh it's just yeah it's just my one a day my complete <laughs> my complete <laughs> <laughs> it's like that movie uh uh, what was it called? I loved it so much with Bradley Cooper. Limitless. Oh my gosh, such a good movie. I can't remember what the drug was called in that though. It, it wasn't Limitless, was it? Uh, maybe. I don't, I don't know. know. I just remember. Yeah, that was a good movie. I don't want to give it away. But yeah. if you haven't seen BC in a good movie, that's a kind of a sci-fi actioner. Uh, it's my favorite of his. It's great. It's so good. I, yeah. So I feel like that would be my limitless situation. I'd be like, oh, it's just my complete. I'm just going <laughs> to snort it over here. Another way that I would remember it, I think, would be if I were to take it as a suppository. Yeah. I also might remember that better. Uh-huh. So Definitely. maybe I'll start that. Start boofing my multivitamins. That's real complete. <laughs> that is complete. Because, <laughs> oh, what was that? What was Did that? Did you hear that? Yeah, what was that sound? The angels agreeing? I have no idea what that was. I've never heard that one. That was really weird. Wow. What it's, a tech, it, uh, what a tech weird I was just going to say, you know what it was. Well, yeah. first, I'll, I, oh. do you want to... Do you want to say hello? Say hello, and oh. then we can explain that? Sure. Okay. So what up, everybody? Welcome to Weed and Grub. My name is Mike Glazer. And I'm Mary Jane Gibson. And uh, Weed and Grub is a podcast about comedy, cooking, cannabis culture, calling shit out. Tech glitches, multivitamins. Boofing uh. multivitamins is usually <laughs> what we talk about. <laughs> usually. Yeah. Once a week, we meet to talk about boofing. <laughs> this week, it's multivitamins. I wonder if there is like a boofing podcast out there. There's got to be, right? Yeah, there, at this point. something for everyone. Yeah, it's probably also on like iTunes, new <laughs> up-and-comers, the Boof Bros. Just broke 130 on the Apple podcast. <laughs> <laughs> boof Bros. Okay. <laughs> will it boof? That's, oh. that's a good YouTube channel. Yeah. Will it or will it not? Like, yeah. Like, would it, could, could you boof this? Mm-hmm. Or just boof this. <laughs> oh, yeah. And it's a Batman style, the old Batman school pow. Boof. Boof. <laughs> boof this. <laughs> Wowzers. Yeah. What well, a pu- I'm, I'm punchy, I think, because of today, to be honest. Yeah, absolutely. Well, yes. we're just getting back from space. Yeah. We were in space all day long. All day long. And Virtual it was so cool. reality. We are hosting for, today was the first of three days, but it's the first ever virtual cannabis conference. It's called Emerge. Uh, shout out to Chuck Warner, who was an interview on last week's episode for uh, bringing us into the fold for this legendary, iconic first ever experience. And uh Having a great time hosting. Yeah. Feeling punchy because we were in space all day. We were in space wandering around, like handing out business cards and going to booths and like checking people out from afar. And like, I mean, the platform that they have for this virtual cannabis conference is uh, it's a first yes. ever. It's this events platform that they brought in from, I think, Belgium. Can I describe it real quick? Do yeah, you mind? Please. Um, it's it's blank slate. It's tabula rasa to begin, and you build the entire conference. So yeah. I'm not sure how all of that is done, but I'm going to speak like I know how okay. it is. <laughs> um, so like my guess is like so we merge just builds the entire expo, uh-huh. and so this one is like a lot of really cool cannabis tech. Um, I was talking with some poli sci guys today who I'd love to get into in a little bit as a bit of foreshadowing, and so it's just this I love like a polyamorous blank... scientist. <laughs> <laughs> What floor were you on? (laughs) I was in the basement. (laughs) (laughs) 
there's the a emerge can of conference basement is like popping off guys. oh that's where Check it's it out. there's a utility closet uh-huh. yeah down in the back right under all the pipes <laughs> it was me and two poly size L- laying pipes <laughs> yeah brad bogus was there <laughs> what's up brad <laughs> Yeah. Oh my God. I'm sorry to interrupt. I That's the beauty of it. It's you. again limitless, though, because you you're you're blank slating it, and then they build this entire conference. And so there's three auditoriums, and there's speakers and panels all day long. And we were introing and outroing some really uh, legendary people in their fields. Yeah, Wanda James, yeah. Steve D'Angelo, amazing panels all day long on like fast acting edibles or social equity and cannabis, all that kind of stuff. And can I just say the space itself, like walking around. So you get your avatar, you get to go to a dressing room where you get to pick out your outfit and your hairdo and your glasses or beard or whatever. And then you wander around in this space and it's all set sort of in this like very futuristic open to um, turquoise air and water with like blimp zooming around. I mean, the whole thing, I don't know if I could adequately express how played cool Mist? it was. Did you ever play Mist? Did you ever I've, play Sims? I used to hang out while, while other people played them. I was never yeah, cool enough yeah. to like be a gamer. Yeah. Um, but it's fun to watch those kind of things. I like watching them. Totally. Yeah. That's it. Yeah. Um, I'm a voyeur, you know, for that kind of stuff. <laughs> in the basement. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. What's it called when you are like, when, like, why is my brain feeling like it's getting back into my body? I don't know. I mean, I feel like there's that, you know, the, the feeling of a sailor going to sea and having to get their sea legs and then getting back to land and having to get, I guess... It must be called land legs. They're land- oh, because of the wibble wobble to the... Yeah, because you have that sort of feeling of like when you're at sea, it takes a while to adjust to being on the water and having that constant motion. And then when you get back to land, you can sometimes feel like you're still on the water. Yeah, I've had that happen. Yeah, and it's an inner ear thing, actually. It's oh. which is yeah that's related to have, getting seasick has to, that's why I think those patches actually target your inner ear like those seasick pack seasickness patches mm-hmm. but anyway I think that there must be an, like something akin to that with going to space with your brain and then having your brain have to come so back. I'm getting land legs again brain brain land brain <laughs> you oh. had space brain <laughs> yeah <laughs> VR brain space brain space brain I and love now that. you have land brain. You're so right. Yeah, we're coming. We have space brain. Yeah, I definitely have space brain. That's so fucking great. Like my eyes feel like they're different sizes. <laughs> they are. One's purple. Yeah. The was... other one, white. Wow. Okay. Yeah. Well. Okay. Good to so know. we're transitioning from space brain to land brain right yeah. now. Yeah. Well, cool. It I, was. I love that. Yeah, and we're gonna go back to space brain tomorrow, and we'll be there all day long. So if you're listening to this on uh, tomorrow, yeah, and then the tomorrow after that, and honestly, come join us at Emerge. It's yeah. EmergeCanada.com. We've been talking about it a lot. Um, portions of all the proceeds to tickets. Tickets are like 10 bucks, or you can get a $25 one. Mm-hmm. Um, money from those is going to Less Prisoner Project, which yep. is fighting to get um, people who have cannabis offenses out of prison. Yep. It, it's it's a great cause for all the right reasons, and come get Space Brain with us. Come, come get Space Brain with us. We, and the best part, my favorite thing today, was that you can just like walk around and meet people and eat a sandwich or smoke a joint mm-hmm. or... Do whatever you want. Exactly. Well, you know? we had such sloppy sandwiches today. <laughs> I was and a mess. I, I, same, same. And that was the coolest part was like we're we're talking with like 25 different people at once online, trading business cards, and I have loose bacon and like that runny mayo lettuce situation running down my wrist, and there's no apologies for it. Definitely. I was networking with some aioli on my chin. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, oh, God, this would be a nightmare in the real world. But here I am with my space brain and nobody knows what I look like. (laughs) Space brain and aioli chin. (laughs) Which also huge compliments to where did we order from today? What? Oh, a silver water cafe. Man, I got to tell you, I didn't know it until today because I was so tuned in to what was going on. Mm -hmm. But when you handed me my lunch to go order, the weight of a to go box is I I live for the heft of a nice to go. You judge it by the heft. I do. Right? Unless you're ordering something like sushi. I mean I even weigh my salads, you know, I judge my salad before I eat it by the heft. Yeah. By the like (laughs) Yeah, like if you if you keep don't give me a light salad. I want that thing to, you know, have a little weight. You're so right. Be a little, you know, kind of yeah right for yeah because it, it it's not even how much the food tastes good it's how much it weighs <laughs> how much it weighs <laughs> it's true it's so true it's not i don't even care if it tastes good i i love a, i love a heft 
I do love. I, think I mean, we're, yeah. yeah, I want a heavy sandwich. I want my porridge to weigh a couple pounds. <laughs> yeah, totally. Yeah, we are. Do you? Uh, would you say that we're a? Are we a heft based society? Uh, I think for sure we're a heft based and a second plate based society in a lot of locations. A hundred percent. You know, it's size and heft. Ooh, you know, I like, know buffets are dead, but would you go to a buffet called hefts? Hefts? Yes, I would. A hundred percent. Right. Yes. That's what. That's all oh my I God, want. That's so sad to think that buffets are dead, but of course, yeah. Yeah, there's no way. I'm really I saw you sneeze that. today. Oh my God, wasn't that crazy? It was. Talk about aioli, Jen. Yeah, <laughs> I sneezed, and it like shocked me so much that I like I kind of went into hysterics about it because I was laughing so hard because I was like, I am so sorry. Like there was, yeah, it was not okay. Yeah, sorry about that. You're not allowed to do a sneeze in public anymore. No. So if you were at a buffet, no. Ooh, that baby's closed. Yeah. Don't go to buffets, but we can make uh, hefty food at home. Holy shit. At a merge? Yeah. It'd be fun to have like some like some fun buffet. Oh. I, you know, like I, I I I like because what Emerge really is telling me too, I don't know how you how do you make money, Mary Jane? Because <laughs> I it, that's the new shopping mall, right? Right. Like that's where you go kick it with all of your friends and your fun, cool fucking avatar. You kick it at the Cinnabon. You make out with somebody in the movie theater. Like well, that one is of the ways I think brilliant. you could make money at Emerge is to do uh, what we kind of did today and pitch to uh, some investors with your cool product and then have them fund that and then build your dreams. And we pitched uh, something that I'm really proud of. I am too. The Nug Mask. It's brilliant. Yeah. So uh, a couple of weeks ago, we were talking on here about how we wanted secret pockets in our masks so we can stick weed under our nose and keep a nug near it all the time. And then uh, our friend Margie made us masks with pockets in them. So we pitched them at the investor pitch <laughs> at Emerge today. Yeah. We said hello. We got to say hello, sharks. Hello, sharks. Pretty cool. Yeah. And then we pitched to what? Eight uh, cannabis investors uh-huh. while hosting. Yep. We haven't heard back yet. I'm pretty sure they're going to give us $420 million. <laughs> yeah, exactly. For the Nug Mask, you wear it. It looks great. Oh, thank you. And I and who wouldn't want a flowery, tasty Nug right by their nose? You just tuck a little Nug in there for the Terps, you know? Pick your favorite strain and, you know, tuck it in there. And it's not weed that you need to, like, necessarily be sharing with anyone else. You know, that's your personal weed. Yeah. A little personal nose Nug. <laughs> your stash stash yeah oh because for you it would be next to your stash right and it would get your stash all stinky you'd I'm, have a stinky stash i would have one mm-hmm. right all terpy mm-hmm. i like this cool. man give, put a little nug in near your nose with the I, nug mask yeah who would buy those everyone everyone i think so yeah yeah, especially because if we do ever get to go to concerts or anything ever again, mm-hmm. I feel like pat downs are going to be a little bit more serious oh, sure. than usual, mm-hmm. right? But nobody's allowed to touch my face ever. That's right. So if I can hide some Molly or yeah. or weed. I used to hide it in my underwear, but now I can hide it in my mask. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Ooh, revolutionary. <laughs> yeah. That's awesome. Uh-huh. Damn, I like this idea so much. Well, you've been wearing it and it looks fantastic. Oh, thank you very much. And thank you to Margie for making them. They're the best. They really are. Um, I also wanted to uh, say that our, our story, our news story today ties into tech as well. Oh, okay. You want to do some news? Yeah. You want to do our Grublet Gazette? Our Grublet Gazette, yes, indeed, is presented this week by Marijuana Moment. Did you hear about this story? Okay, the drone drop of weed in Israel. No, what? A drone drop? There was a drone drop. We've been talking about drone drops for like two years now. A dro drone drop. Yeah. So basically, the story is that a drone dropped hundreds of free bags of weed over Tel Aviv last week, and there was a... um, message on the encrypted app telegram which i guess must be the same as signal or whatever yeah, same know, like whatsapp or whatever and this message went out that said it's time my dear brothers is it a bird is it a plane no it's the green drone handing out free cannabis from the sky and then this drone flew through and dropped hundreds of baggies of weed and people ran in to pick them up fuck yes yeah oh my god that's awesome it rained weed in tel aviv isn't that amazing when it comes to like happy news stories, this is one of the happiest news stories I've ever heard. I think it's just, I mean, you know, it's it's what we have to be doing right now. Dropping weed from it's the sky? what everyone needs. There was when I lived in uh, New York, there was a a wonderful uh, 
oh, I can't remember what they called themselves. I feel like it was it was a play on Johnny Appleseed. It was like something Danksy weed, okay, or whatever. And they were going around leaving um, little uh, dime bags like taped to park benches and like in the crook of trees and just all over the city. Fucking brilliant. Like, New York needs this. And it was like so rad. So yeah, oh. if you have the you know ability to share like that, and yeah. you can do a good deed like that. Israel. Yeah. Wow. Pretty great. And you know, like, is, weed in Israel is uh, incredible. Like, the research that's been done in Israel on weed has been, like, cutting edge. I mean, the scientist who actually identified THC for the first time was an Israeli doctor named Dr. Mashulam. No kidding. Like, yeah, they're at the forefront of, cut, like, cutting edge cannabis research. So, unreal. Yeah. So, not only role. did they, like, inv- cr- I- identify THC, mm-hmm. but now they're dropping it for everyone <laughs> yeah they're raining it from the sky uh a couple of people did get arrested though it was like not a legal act but yeah fuck fuck the establishment no drop weed on people yes <laughs> that's not no 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 also that drone should go down to the prison and lift them out if that's how that went yeah yeah man so cool that's like finding a 20 dollar bill on the ground Mm-hmm. I bet that's the same freaking feeling. Better, I would. Think, yeah, it is a better because it's a it's a more rare experience. You know, everyone's like found that twenty or that five or whatever, but finding like weed and yeah. Have you ever found drugs on the ground? Oh uh, yeah, I used to stay uh, after concerts and do the sweep always. You'd be that's last. such a smart move. Yeah, it's like a classic. You know, you just wait and wait and wait for everyone to leave, and then you're last out, and you just scan the ground as you go. And yeah, I found tons of stuff. Tons of awesome stuff. I bet. And some stuff that, yeah, was like bunk. I mean, you wouldn't want to like pick up a white powder that you don't know what it is and do that. But it's like in the nacho cheese with a footprint through it. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. No, like a half a goo ball. Mm, No, not that. But no. Yeah, I found plenty of weed that way. Oh, man, that's cool. Yeah. I love the sweep. Yeah. You're full of tips and tricks. Man, kind of old school in that way. You're also like full of multivitamins. So you're resonating at a higher level than I am. Seriously, I'm like vibrating on a multiplane multivitamin plane yeah (laughs) (laughs) um has there ever been a are you on google right now yeah you want me to look something up yeah sure has there ever been a plane that like dropped like you know operation dumbo drop with weed has there ever been like operation cannabis dump where like a cargo plane has dropped just tons of flour for everybody because a drone is amazing and i feel like that's the future i feel certain that that has probably never happened on purpose i feel sure that there are definitely planes that had cargo loads that like had to drop them because they were being chased or whatever mm. and there were also planes that used to spray cannabis fields with horrible pesticides to like um you know get them to kill the crops to kill the crops yeah, yeah i remember hearing about yeah. that so i think those were plane drops that were horrible that That's, involved weed but yeah i don't know about the like good deed plane drop of a cargo load of cannabis over a city to make people feel good mm-hmm. not so much it's interesting to hear you talk about that when um we were at emerge all day and i was talking to some uh guys who run a really cool led light company mm. and at first when there was the whole debate with like indoor versus outdoor sun grown versus not sun grown and now you can have led lights that replicate the sun to Mm -hmm. such an exact measure that they think they're outside, which is so cool. But hearing about things like um, devastation and destruction of crops from above makes me kind of love indoor a little bit more because Mm. of the safety and regulations and also the idea of like a a plane from some king who hates you can't get you in the same way sure i i like i like indoor a bit more there's there's like there's there's insurance in it for me absolutely i mean there are a lot of people who would not consume their medical marijuana if it were grown outside because of like all the outdoor factors of mites and pesticides and all that kind of stuff and they'll only you know smoke the dro yeah uh or ingest that you know in whatever form because it's like you know you can control it yeah more for sure man but there's nothing better than a sun grown what am i saying <laughs> uh, yeah, no, i'm like uh outdoor sun grown is my favorite so i don't know if i can support you in what you're trying to say but i'm gonna try and back you up but you know what i'm saying yeah like, i do like the idea of like mitigating risk i mean that's the I thing there, there are pros and cons on both sides and you'll get an outdoor organic farmer who will be like you can never possibly produce like the biodynamic soil and the terroir and all that kind of stuff just like you would talk to a winemaker about that same kind of thing and then they'll fight with someone who is a hydroponic farmer who's like but you can also never dial in the turf beans and the cannabinoids and control the experience the way I can so I can actually create a better 
more vitally uh, efficient and beneficial version of the plant. Yeah. And they'll, the, never the twain shall meet. And that'll probably always be the fight. Freaking crazy. Right? <laughs> it's you, so And you crazy. can see both sides. I could totally see how, you know, both of them feel about it. And I visited indoor and outdoor grows. Equally impressive in totally different ways. Yeah. The, the, the idea of outdoor for me, though, is exciting because have I talked about on here? Have I explained? <laughs> <laughs> you, uh-huh. um that book i'm reading uh i'm blanking on the name right now because i have space brain oh i don't know Which but book you're he's he's the michelin starred chef who is on the farm yes you know what i'm talking about i do not thomas keller is no, it no but like same i know what idea. you're saying yes the yeah. blue hill um jaleel white no <laughs> who is it i can't remember his name but i know who you're talking about do you want to hear a boring story that i hope i get right okay sure and if i start snoozing you either people will skip ahead you'll just 30 hear my seconds. forehead hit the microphone <laughs> yeah. just be like... okay go so the really cool thing about outdoor he was there's a whole chapter on wheat and how wheat has become um not what wheat should be mm-hmm. it used to taste like wheat and now it doesn't because of processing okay and he's on a farm and he's with this wheat farmer who is talking about terroir yep is that how you say it yep and learning how to work with the soil to bring it to its most self-actualized soilness Mm -hmm. and there was all these i'm gonna get this wrong but you're gonna follow it along and the inaccuracies or at least a mad lib style of oh you meant this and you meant this gotcha it's like maggots all over this field and he's like fuck what am i gonna do i just bought all this land and all these maggots are here Okay, what does the soil need? Oh, it needs nitrogen. I'm going to grow this huge nitrogen, nitrogen dense vegetable that makes the soil full of nitrogen to give it life. Then I'm going to grow this other thing through there that loves the oxygen. And between all of that, we're going to just make this soil the tastiest, toastiest, roastiest it can be. Mm-hmm. So we're going to make this soil beautiful. Then what happened was he realized that the maggots were only attacking certain plants and not other plants. And it's because they wanted all of the excess nitrogen, say. Mm -hmm. Man, I'm wrong, but I'm right. Okay. And essentially what happened was he finally got the soil to a point where he could grow what he wanted to, which was wheat. Mm -hmm. And all the other plants that were growing there to level out the soil and to balance it out and the plants that the maggots wanted could all live harmoniously in an ecosystem Because the maggots won't touch the wheat Mm because they have no interest in it. Mm -hmm. The plants that attract the maggots Mm -hmm. have their own little life cycle going where they need each other. And then everything else is keeping the soil percolating at its most capable capabilities. Uh And he just like cracked the soil code for this land. And it blew me away. Isn't that the fucking coolest thing? Creating an ecosystem. I, yeah. I, I know not exactly the levels of and the things of which you speak, but like my dad was a conservationist and fishery scientist, and he would create an ecosystem in his fish tanks where it was like snails and plants and fish and all of these different things. A bunch of the things that people would like add co- copper sulfate to to get rid of the snails, but then the snails in my dad's tank would eat the algae so that he didn't need to eat like add something to control. It was like all so that. So no like, chemicals. He was just figuring out how to keep everything happy without eradicating. Huh? Yeah, a perfectly beautifully balanced ecosystem that replicated the natural world, which is sounds like is what your farmer person wow. that you were reading about did. Yeah, yeah. that's exactly it. It's, oh man, that's it. I mean, just all things in balance and in harmony, and that way you don't need to use the pesticides, and that you use instead like the beneficial insects. Like I love learning about the fact that there are all of these wonderful insects, including wasps. Hmm. You know, ladybugs, all of these critters that you can introduce into your garden that will actually do the work for you it's just amazing that's so neat yeah wow your dad sounds really cool my dad was the best really really rad yeah wow cool well you know another really cool tech item that we should talk about oh yes it is time for us to talk about i i love the iq too Mm -hmm. it's so fun to use the davinci vaporizer and today's episode is presented by davinci vaporizer talk about space brain it's a nice little iq two to have in your hand to bring you back to earth totally i love that yeah the uh da vinci vaporizer is the only cannabis vaporizer that is built with a sealed zirconia and glass vapor pathway which means none of your vapor ever touches any metals or plastics you know how superman crash landed in that barn unharmed Uh uh-huh 
As a baby? As a baby. When he came from, Kry- what was it? Krypton. Krypton. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. I feel like you could put your weed in a Da Vinci and it could like fall from space through the atmosphere and crash and be unharmed and beautiful. Like the heft of oh. the of the IQ2 and the and the way it is like created, it feels impenetrable and penetrable impenetrable impenetrable indestructible mm-hmm. and perfect it does feel like i will like the feeling of it in your hand is like when you pick up that perfect rock at the beach it's like got that lovely fits right in your palm i like the heft of it i like the way it feels in my pocket yeah it's awesome and it gives you the most smooth pure tasteful experience you can use it with flour or extract or both and you can take control of your airflow and temperature control um, and then there's this like amazing dial where you can actually dial up or down to uh, like control how, how dense your hit is basically exactly yeah i mean sometimes i love a little baby poof and sometimes i want to blow a cumulus cloud exactly and it allows me to do both mm-hmm. with any type of thing i want to smoke or vape or any it's a swiss army it's, it's a, swiss army it's as a, hell it's yeah exactly <laughs> <laughs> there is no denying that if you want the cleanest experience with the most control da vinci has you covered and we've been using our iq too and we highly recommend going and checking it out at davincivaporizer.com where you can use 10 percent off or you can use our code grub to get 10 percent off at checkout yeah it's pretty so, sweet yeah go to davincivaporizer.com enter the code grub at checkout get your own hit us up when you do and let us know what you think yeah three people that i know of have dm me so far and they're like it's on its way Ooh. also if you're going to use a code like grub for 10 percent off it'd be really great if you could wear a disguise and act like you're a hacker <laughs> and when you write in grub be like i need more time i need more time and then you write in grub and then it's like i think we're and it's like we gotta go and then you hit and then it takes the money off and it's like okay we're in and then you can pretend you're a hacker i yes you should definitely wear um sunglasses and a hood when ordering a da vinci online <laughs> yeah <laughs> That's what hackers wear, right? Yeah, yeah, totally. Yeah. Mitz, that's what Mr. Robot wore. Oh, yeah. I, I didn't really get into that show, but... I'm starting the season right now. Okay. Well, I'm watching season one. I'll follow up with you on that. You have not... Do you have hacker interests? Do I have hacker interests? I loved the Girl with the Dragon Tattoo movie. Um, so, Loki, yes, I guess, because mm-hmm. I think it's like a cool world, you yeah, know? Yeah, it is. Yeah. But not as someone who wants to learn how to hack. Would you watch it the way you would watch Mist or Sims or a video game? Would you like stand watch it? someone hacking? Would you watch it? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I think it's probably not very exciting to watch. I don't think so either. It's just watching someone stress out a bunch of about a bunch of like things on a screen that I don't understand. So, O's and you know. ones. Yeah, I don't think it would be very exciting. But I, I've always loved like spy movies, and you know, of course, who doesn't? You know, The Matrix is like the best of all time, and then. You know, I grew up with the kind of like the Russian coding where they're all like sitting in a cold bunker somewhere and there's like someone coming with, you know, totally nuclear codes and all that kind of stuff. So, yeah. What do you think the nuclear code is? What do I think the nuclear code is? Do you think it's more is? complicated than these fucking Apple passwords that it's trying to get me to use all the time now? It's probably just like zero, zero, one, you know? <laughs> Speaking of nuclear codes, can we talk about who we think should be in charge of the nuclear codes in 2024? Because we stayed up late. Uh, one on night mushrooms. on mushrooms last weekend and talked about like our ideal cabinet for 2024. Mm-hmm. And I think we came up with some good candidates. I do. If you're going to be underneath the full moon on mushrooms and talk <laughs> about who's in your weed cabinet, you're going <laughs> to knock it out of the park. So uh, I'd like to nominate for president Claw Money. 100% Claw Money. Yep. Yeah. A talented, n- no nonsense, but fun as hell yeah. weed smoking artist who has like opened more doors and gateways while also being cool as fuck. She's so fucking cool. She's brilliant. She's politically fucking astute. She's like social media savvy. And she's like, for all of her fucking coolness and I don't care, she's a total mama bear too. She has that energy that's like, she will make shit better for everyone around her. She sent me this hamburger sweatshirt I wear all the time just like, because she's nice. Yeah, it's fucking, she's just like a great person with like a ton of knowledge about everything in the world. She has a podcast actually. Uh, We'll link it in the show notes. But we should like definitely put someone like Claw in charge because... 
the world needs that kind of energy. And if we're going to shake it up at all and, you know, nominate someone who's really going to get shit done, claw money for president. You heard it here first. Okay. Who's your VP, Mary Jane? Uh, John Gabris. <laughs> <laughs> because John Gabris would be the best backup president. And then he also wouldn't fuck with claw money because Mm-mm. they're both East Coast and he would like he would support her respectfully and he wouldn't let her like railroad him but he would also kind of like just always stand back and be like she's got this yeah she's and, good and you don't you need to worry about him when it's a prepared speech if you've ever listened to his podcast high and mighty yeah you know he does no preparation and always has enough to say he's, yeah he's perfect he's the perfect backup president because he'd just be like over there having a great time and then he'd be like we need you in the fucking oval office and he'd be like i'll be right there and he'd do a bong rip and he'd show up and he'd be fine he'd be totally he'd fine be, he'd be the first vp to use a hoverboard to get between <laughs> wings <laughs> He'd like totally hold meetings in the pool. Yeah. Oh, totally. You know like in the long pool. Yeah. He'd like be posted up at the end of the pool with like a koozie and be like, what's up, everybody? Uh-huh. I have passed another amendment where all paintings need the eye holes cut out so we can look out from behind them and wiggle our eyes back and forth because it's fun. He would. Ha- yes. This is exactly what he would do in the White House. Yeah. And that, that kind of thing, I think, would be really great for the country. <laughs> I think you're so right. <laughs> That's great. Uh, what what are the other things that are in the oh, who pre- else press we... press secretary? Uh, Zoe Wilder. Yeah, of course. Yep. Yeah. Um, who else did we come up with? Well, Snoop Dogg is in there somewhere. Oh, Snoop Dogg. <laughs> yeah. But wasn't he just like the... <laughs> he just kind of kicks. The... <laughs> no, I mean he would have to be like uh, secretary. Education, education and arts. S- n- I mean, he, very cool if he could do something with the arts. Maybe he'd be a great like um, head of like the department of like the fucking treasury, homeland, or homeland security. But I think the treasury. He'd be better than fucking Mnuchin. No doubt. Do- he knows about fucking how to build an empire and how to keep your fucking yeah. dollars safe. Yeah, and he takes care of his fam. He basically owns like huge, huge, huge amounts of Canadian cannabis companies in addition to a cannabis media empire, in addition to his entire fucking artists and fucking like artistic rap record. Yes, and lifting up so many other artists, mm-hmm. co-signing so many, like growing other businesses. Yeah, he's treasurer. You're absolutely oh, right. Oh, we're going right? to shine. Our economy is going to shine. Who else? Wow. Snoop Dogg for treasure. I love that. Yeah. Um, Who else is in there? Secretary I, of Education? Yeah. I need an artist. To be Secretary of Education? Yeah. I need mm. somebody who will put the arts back into schools and show how important they are. Low Buck? Low Buck. I don't know if he smokes weed, but I love it. I think Excuse it would be me, a Burfin. neat uh, president of, or Secretary of Education because he would, yeah, like he... You know, he does cross the bridge voice. when he did yo the dance with Yo Yo Ma mm-hmm. that Spike Jones recorded. It was glorious. It's beautiful. One of the most beautiful things I've seen. I would do a little buck move. Okay. Okay. Cool. All right. Who else was in there? I can't remember now. I just remember like shouting at the moon at like three in the morning, being like Claw Money and John <laughs> Gabris. It's a, <laughs> it's a Claw Gabris ticket, twenty twenty four. Cardi B should be in there. Oh, Cardi B's definitely fucking in there. I mean, there are so many fucking awesome people in there. Like, yeah, we would just pack that cabinet with artists and good people, and you know, so many of those people are politically fucking crazy smart. I would love if Cardi B became a Supreme Court justice. Uh, yeah. Wouldn't that be that? That's who, if if Claw Money and Gabris are P and VP, okay, and they get a Supreme Court pick, okay, Cardi B. Um, I don't know about the Supreme Court situation. What do you mean? I want I want Cardi B in charge of shit, but the Supreme Court. I mean, you really do have to be a judge for a very long time to get on there. She's so good on IG. <laughs> She's so good on Twitter. She truly is. I will vote for. A- for her to be a judge without for her to be a judge just purely based on her social media impact. Okay. She has it all figured out, and it's fair, and she stands for, like, justice. Well, and she definitely does not suffer any fools, and she has nothing to hide. And she started from the bottom, now we're here. Yeah. Like, that's somebody who understands all, like, quadrants of what it means to be an American. Yeah. All right, Cardi B's definitely in the cabinet, possibly on the Supreme Court. 2024. Mm-hmm. Okay, good. All right. I, this is a solid, solid. Um, I want to keep adding roster. to this and building it and coming back to it. Well, really if anybody has it. picks and positions, yeah. like hit us up. Get at us. Yeah. Who else is like, you know, your pick for president? Which brings me to um, our cream soda situation. Oh. Uh, I, I, I don't want to skip too far forward to Buds of the Week, but I will say thank you all so much for all of your cream soda support and 
afterwards sending us so many new soda suggestions. We have five or six we found right now. So I think we're going to do another soda taste mm -hmm. very soon. Um, I, I don't want to say too much more. but I also will say that the other day uh, I felt vindicated and victorious when you split a soda with me and you brought my soda glass over and it had ice in it and yours didn't. And I was like, holy shit, that's so cool. Yeah. Like you sort of capitulated uh, halfway, you know, because I was like, it has to be cold. And what are you doing drinking it warm? And you were like, you can have it both ways. You can have uh, yeah. it cold. I think I, I'm a socialist, Mary Jane. Yeah, I think, <laughs> I think you are. I Just because I hate ice and don't think it's appropriate for any situation doesn't mean you have to suffer my... Um, what I enjoy. Your ice proclivities? My ice proclivities. But wait, how is that socialist? Well, I'm not sure. <laughs> <laughs> okay. But it sounded good, right? I'm, willing I'm not to in roll the cabinet. With it. I'm really in a roll with it. <laughs> I like how neither of us gave each other positions because it's like, oh, no. Oh, yeah, you don't want me in charge of anything. <laughs> I can barely take a vitamin. <laughs> I mean, there are certain things that I do extremely well. I'm not going to, you know, totally like nag myself, but uh, I don't want to be in government. I don't think I would be good at that. The official podcast of the White House? Yeah. Oh, yeah. That'd I be mean, fun. Listen, we can be entertainment and culture contributors to, like, I would, I would love to be head of the National Endowment for the Arts. You know? That's cool. That's a very cool position. I would love to be giving money to theaters and museums and artists, like, in fucking industrial weird parts of the country to make shit and speak up and yeah that's a good dream that. yeah yeah and then your microphone's in the smithsonian okay how fun is that <laughs> love a, it it's fun yeah does do you think obama's mike M mike Marin? <laughs> do you think the obama mic is gonna go in the smithsonian the one that uh he used on mark Marin's pod yeah I mean, I for, wonder... For the podcast wing that is going to be <laughs> through a merge virtually happening one day. Oh, yeah. I wonder if there... Yeah, there will be a podcast museum, won't there? There has to... Yes. I mean, it's undeniable at this point. It's, um, we'll yeah. have pictures of this equipment and it'll look all like old timey and we'll be like, oh my God. They still had things on tables and not inside their brains. <laughs> they had wires? <laughs> That's insane. <laughs> oh, yeah. You have a outdated Neuralink. Where oh. you're still using Dolby surround sound. Fuck. Fucking Neuralink. That whole thing More like is Nerd -Link, crazy. Huh? Nerd -Alert. I do not like it. I don't know. Well, like, okay. Do we want to dive down that or no? Um, I want to come back to it another time. Okay. I don't know if I have the energy after our like VR tech day where we're diving back into that again tomorrow. And I'm like, I can't have a whole fight about Neuralink right you're now. You're so right. Yeah. We end up back in Space Brain at the end of this episode. And it's just, oh, no. no. <laughs> Everybody sees you and you're the size, shape, and smoothness of that baby at the end of 2001. Everyone's like, Mary Jane, we can't get her back. She has space brain. She's just floating around. She took so many multivitamins and she went into the VR world. Now she's just a blob. She's just a sentient blob with aioli on what looks like it was once a chin. <laughs> Oh, man. Let's do Buds of the Week. Okay. <laughs> That's so funny. Oh, okay. My Ooh. Bud of the Week this week. I'm so excited about this. I want to um, shout out a few people as Buds of the Week who are working for Northeast Leaf, which is a new magazine that came out with a bunch of old High Times colleagues of mine. Um, Danny Danko, Mike Giaconis, um, Michael Trehoniak, a bunch of staffers have founded this amazing Northeast Leaf magazine that's going to be free in a bunch of dispensaries. And the first issue just came out. And the cover art is like, I brought a little tear to my eye. It's yeah. so beautiful. It truly is. It felt like looking at like the birth of a new fucking iconic cannabis media publication. They are all such OGs who know so much that to have their own publication, yes, it probably is going to be iconic. It absolutely is. And the Northeast is the new Southwest or the South. So like, you know, California's had so much going on and so much media attention paid to it, but there's so much happening on the East Coast. And there's like real true weed OGs there who have a lot of amazing knowledge and they're putting it into this magazine so what's the ig again it's northeast leaf mag and it's such a sexy cover oh my god it's beautiful it's this lighthouse with the eye where the light would be and this like huge beautiful buds in the foreground and i don't even know how to you know talk about it without gushing it's really beautiful and congratulations to all of the folks working there 
fucking cool. Mm-hmm. I also have, um, before I do my butt of the week, I want to shout out the people I was talking to at Emerge who um, apparently these poli sci folks, mm-hmm. the ones from your basement. Yeah. Trist. What up, guys? <laughs> <laughs> They're down there like, rawr, rawr. <laughs> did you take their ball guys out? Uh, no, I'd left them locked there. Yeah. And then I picked their electronic wallets. <laughs> now I'm looking up their US bank logins. <laughs> Stealing your money. No, I'm kidding. Oh, uh, one of them has the trademark for the sous vide machine, too. Whoa. Which is unreal. So, like, there's this very cool cross section of weed and grub that is happening in the cannabis community yeah. where somebody who um, has put the sous vide machine on the map is also now like has their mind going towards distillates and things. It's a very cool time. That's incredible. And on that tip, my butt of the week this week is Roy Wiles the third. Um, it's Wiles Roy is the Instagram account. And to go back on that cream soda sent us a beautiful video of a nug and said, this is the best cream soda. And it is a beautiful nug. The strain is called cream soda. So when I asked, I was like, yo, can we uh, share this? video and show you out by name uh roy goes or is it wa like patrick wa wiles the third how oh, cool would that be yeah i bet it's roy okay um <laughs> roy was like yeah that would be awesome you guys are the best i love the podcast and um amazing yeah roy is That's... just looks like a very cool person who smokes beautiful flower sticky so, icky yeah yeah so i think you're right of all of them ibc fits teddy's boylan uh-huh. jones this is the best cream soda that's the best yeah and look at those THC levels. That stuff is potent. Colorado cream soda. Hold on. I'm going to try and pause the video to see wow. if I can learn more. Okay. Oh, and instead I just X'd out of it. Okay. Well. <laughs> <laughs> Space brain. That kind of day. <laughs> wow. What a freaking cool day. Yeah. What? So, so good. Yeah. It's a pretty interesting time. I mean, COVID is crazy. The world is crazy. Everything's upside down, but there's still amazing things happening with uh, incredible people like pushing things forward despite all of the insanity we're gonna survive <sighs> mary jane thank you for that we're gonna survive thank you there's so many good people out here mm-hmm. who have deep beliefs in making the world a better place mm-hmm. you just fucking survive and i know we're gonna cool that's what's up good to hear is that a good way to end it is okay well everybody hope you really enjoyed this episode hope you're having beautiful weeks follow us at weed and grub on instagram Email us at wg at weedandgrub.com. Um, slide into the DMs with some hot whisk pics. Always, please. I Like, it makes my day every time someone then sends me a whisk pic. So. Yeah. And if anybody has cabinet positions. Oh, yes. And the people who should fill them in our cabinet. Get at us. Let's go. I'm yeah. bad at Photoshop, but I know how to put a head on a robe. <laughs> <laughs> A head on a what? Like a judge's robe. Oh, I see what you mean. Yeah. Yeah. Well, like I can crop the head. <laughs> we can put Seth Rogen over Kavanaugh's head on the Supreme Court. Cardi B. Cardi B and Seth Rogen. And Seth Rogen. Come on. See, hit yeah. us up. We need some help. <laughs> <laughs> Bye, everyone. Bye. Bye.